Hey guys, welcome back to Planet J Judah and welcome to a Reddit, not necessarily am I the a-hole, but definitely crochet slash knit, if not fiber art related edition. Uh, as I said last week, I was going to try and change it up a little bit because it's really hard to find new stories on the am I the a-hole crochet slash knit related stories. So, I figured today we'll just jump, jump, jump right into a little bit of drama. And as always, I go into it blind. I will get on my tablet and I will open up Reddit. Mm, excuse me. Oh, look, there I am. Say hi. Anyways, I will get on my tablet and I will look up various things via drama via drama, i.e. drama, whatever. Moving on, I will type in drama crochet or drama knit and see what I can come up with. And then we will go from there and we will pick a story. So yeah, I uh, hope you'll join me and maybe we'll have some fun with a little bit of drama. And then at the end, I'll obviously do something cute because, you know, I have to. Alrighty, so I found this one from three months ago. It was posted in r slash crochet. Here is the original poster and it, the title of it or the caption. I don't, anyways, the headline is why are some older crocheters so mean to new crocheters? And it is dubbed a discussion. So this is what they had to say. Uh, I was at a craft group recently and I was crocheting tonight and the memory came back to me. I was there doing my thing and there were two other crocheting. This is all paraphrasing because I don't remember their words exactly, but my friend said she, my friend, she's in her mid twenties. She was talking about how she found a tool online that's supposed to help you make a magic circle. I've heard of tools that do that. Not ever tried any, not ever really looked into it, but I have heard of a tool that does that. The other lady who was crocheting, she looked about late fifties and started laughing. When she realized we were both looking at her like she grew a second head, she went, she went, oh, you're serious. <laughs> we both kind of gave her this, what are you on about look? And she continued to say, unprompted that a magic circle wasn't that hard to make and something along the lines of if you can't even make a magic circle why are you even crocheting she said some other things but it was super clear she was looking down on my friend for being new to crocheting i know i know me personally it took months to figure out the magic circle this is just a a pattern I've seen of older crocheters being mean to people who are new to the craft. I genuinely don't understand it. I've seen people do similar things in this sub on occasion and it's just like, for what? Okay, so in this very instance, I it took me a while to figure out how to do the magic circle. And actually I've also kind of learned that it's kind of just a slipknot, just done differently. But that's just my personal opinion, if that's, if that's true or not, because there was some, uh, the original granny square that I did, did a slipknot and then you crocheted into that, or slipknot, yeah, then you crocheted it into that slipknot just like you would a magic circle. So that's how I kind of came up with it, that it's roughly the same thing. I don't know. That's beside the point. I don't think that it is fair for someone who is more versed in whatever craft it is to look down on someone who's new and trying to figure things out. I don't know. That just seems kind of mean, uh, which is exactly what they were saying. And I think that's kind of wrong. Um, I started crocheting when I was in my teens, but I was just barely learning at that point and I was being taught by my grandma and I moved out of state. So I stopped doing it and I never really picked it up. And then years and years and years later, I picked it up again and then I stopped doing it 
because um, I couldn't get it quite. And until finally, uh, a couple of years ago, I picked it up again and I haven't ever looked back. So technically, in my age, I am still a newbie. I am nowhere near a prolific crocheter. <laughs> like, I can do okay, but I definitely don't know exactly what I'm doing. And following patterns, oh my goodness, I do better when I watch a video. Excuse me. I do better when I watch a video. So, I mean, everybody's different. And for someone to look down on someone else for trying to use a tool because they don't know how to do it on their own without said tool is just wrong. That's my personal opinion, but let's see what Reddit had to say. Okay, so here is a comment. It says, I believe that some people forget what it's like to be young and learning something new. Now, as far as you don't have to be young learning something new, you can be old and learn something new. So anything, learning something new is the main, as far as I'm concerned, as far as an actual craft and learning how to do stuff, that it doesn't matter what age you are. It's difficult to learn something new. They've been crocheting so long or started so young that the phase of their life where they would have loved to have more help has faded from their memory. So they have very little sympathy for people who don't understand something that seems inherently easy to them. True. I also feel like people don't realize that not everyone started as a child or being taught by someone older in their family willing to sit down and teach them each little skill. There's a, there's a knowledge gap because crafts and homes economics were um, devalued and older folks lived in a world where everyone learned these skills. That is definitely true. So they, they um, brought up the age difference. It's not necessarily, it's, it's just when you actually learn something. Uh, someone who commented on that comment said, I think you're spot on about this. My grandma taught me when I was super young and she was a very patient teacher having raised six kids plus two grandkids. Then I drifted away from crochet and picked it up again in college in the late 90s before YouTube, etc. Trying to self-teach myself from the terrible drawings in the stupid books was a nightmare. Oh, I have trouble reading patterns, so I can, <laughs> I can understand that. So I went back to my grandma for help. She was sweet, but seemed a lot less patient then when I was a kid and suddenly it clicked for me. She wasn't teaching an eight year old. She was, I was fully grown adult who hadn't been doing my homework for many years and I should have accomplished more proficiency by my age. But like I hadn't needed to crochet anything. So everything I had learned was forgotten. So back in her day, it was considered a regular thing to repair clothing when it was getting worn out and they learned to crochet, darn, sew, knit, and whatnot as a means of extending the longevity of clothing. Now we just buy new, a new sweater when the old one gets too many holes. They, they were a whole lot more into repair culture than we could even begin to imagine. And with that general life philosophy and core value comes a disdain for anyone who seems to dismiss the importance of being so self-reliant, sadly. I'm now teaching my 11-year-old how to crochet and I'm keeping all of this in mind while I do. The value to her learning this skill is remark remarkably, remarkably, remarkably different then why my grandmother learned it in the first place. My grandmother didn't have clothing stores or Amazon delivery for a new sweater if the old one got a hole. My daughter does. But, but we're hardwired to want to create and produce. So I'm teaching her interests. Teaching to her interests. We're making pot holders and wash rags, then moving up to granny squares. Her ultimate goal is amigurumi, but I told her that starting with that will just frustrate her until I under until she understands the basics. She's doing great and learning a lot. So far, seems to be proud of what she's do doing. 
I'm going to just keep being patient. And even if she comes back 10 years from now and has forgotten everything, I'll try to remember that I also had a 10 year break, 10 year plus break from it. Okay. So that makes sense to me. Then somebody else said, um, to be frank, I have never crocheted a square. I started with Converse style slippers, then did nothing for am but amigurumi. I'm pretty pleased with what I've made to, with what I've made to. And then, um, is it the same person that, no. Then someone commented underneath that and said, LOL, I'm the opposite. I've made a ton of center out blankets because I suck at at row by row and get uneven edges still sometimes, but not even gonna tackle amigurumi and lace or anything that requires smaller than worsted weight yarn. Nope. I know I don't have the patience and I'm too old to obtain anymore. <laughs> so, I mean, okay, yeah. Um, we just need to remember what it was like to learn something new. And actually, there's so many new techniques every day that we're always constantly learning something new. So to look down on someone is just, I don't want to say ignorance. It's not ignorance. It's being forgetful of where you came from. And we all need to remember that we had to start from the bottom and it wasn't always easy to learn how to do some of these crafts. I still have an issue with um, with uh, crocheting written patterns. Like when I do a written pattern, I end up doing it wrong, I feel. But I can do a pattern that I've watched somebody do on YouTube or in a video format. So I don't know. We just, we all have a different way of learning. We all have different skill levels and we should be out there to help each other, not to look down on each other because we all sucked at one point in our lives. <laughs> Let's see if I can find anything else. Otherwise, we will be moving on to something cute. Alrighty, so I did find one more and this was from 12 months ago, also in the r uh, slash crochet um, Reddit posts. And it says, how do you justify Sorry, it says justifying, but how do you de justifying crocheting something when you can buy it for much less? And they go on to say, I'm a newish crocheter about two months. So this was 12 months ago. So 14 months ago, they started to crochet. And the process has been amazing so far. Crochet has become an important part of my life. It gives me purpose and I love the sense of achievement when I finish a product. But recently my friends have been asking me why don't I buy a finished product instead of making my own when it costs lesser. And for context, I've been wanting to crochet my own hexagon cardigan, but the materials cost is slightly off-putting for the same materials price. And then in parentheses, not even counting my man hours, uh, in parentheses, I could be getting a finished non-crocheted cardigan. It might just be my mental barrier to spending so much on myself, but how do you justify, explain, just by slash explain uh, the materials when you can save money by buying a similar product straight. Good question. All right. So apparently people have commented because or they they added to this because of people's comments because it says edit. I've been convinced. Thank you all for your sincere replies. This is why I really enjoy the crochet community. It's always so wholesome compared to the last story. <laughs> Anyways, I'll be purchasing the materials for my hexagon cardigan. After all, I still need to make a hexagon cardigan. I have, I already have the yarn to do it, but I just haven't done it yet. I love granny, granny squares. Why am I afraid of doing a hexagon one? <laughs> Anyways, let's go on to what the commenters had to say. Uh, someone said it's a hobby your hobby costs x amount of money crochet has a hobby as a hobby is very cheap if you figure out the number of hours versus the cost also it's very rewarding to say i made this yes it is you just get a sense of 
accomplishment and pride in your, excuse me, in your finished product. Uh, someone else said underneath that, and they're like, oh, good one. Not the mindset of, and this is a quote, if this were my job and the finished product costs X amount and it takes me X amount of hours to complete, my hourly rate would be less than minimum wage. But it takes me way longer to crochet something for X amount of dollars than, for example, building something with Lego for that same amount. And then under that, someone's like, oh, don't diss Lego. That's 10 cents per piece. Less than a stitch maker, stitch marker. See, cheap hobby. And unlike crochet, when it's done, you can tear it down and rebuild it. Hours and hours of time happily spend with little bits of colorful plastic. But don't look at my coffee table. It's covered in whips and various fiber crafts. Um, someone else said, yarn doesn't usually hurt when you step on it. Well, that's true. Uh, someone else underneath that said, but a U.S. Uh, number nine needle under a pile of clothes hurts like the dickens when you plop down a crisscross applesauce and it goes a quarter into your thigh. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh. Uh, in parentheses, high school me still doesn't start cleaning his room regularly despite this stern warning from the fiber gods. <laughs> <clears throat> oh my goodness, don't, oh gosh. And someone else put under that, new fear unlocked. <laughs> I think the comments are the best part of this. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, and then someone um, commented underneath that in regards to the number nine needle saying, uh, the way you told this made me think it was going to end up in... <laughs> A different body part. Same me. I th seriously thought it was like going somewhere else. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, well, you can do the same with crochet. Frog it and start again. Hence the build it and uh, tear it down and rebuild it. Uh, let's see. Are we any? Ah. Someone else said I like the act of crocheting. And then underneath that said, same, I'm constantly trying to give away things because I like crocheting, but don't care about actually having crocheted items. Interesting. And someone underneath that said, same, making amigurumis helps with my depression. And then I give them away because I don't want a hundred stuffies around my apartment. Material cost is justified the same as my therapy cost. Exorbitant, but very necessary. Well, yeah, okay. I understand that. Uh, let's see, someone else said, yep, if your hobby was video games, you'd spend money on consoles and games and get no final product and no one bats an eye. Very true. You're investing in many hours of fun. Crochet can be relatively cheap if you're not looking to make slash save money with it, but instead of think, instead, think of your yarn cost in terms of cost per hour of fun. I like that. And let's see. Um, they aren't understanding why we crochet. We like the process of crocheting and knitting. It relaxes me and I get unique custom made clothing out of that I like wearing. Also, I can't get the sweater or hat or scarf I'm making at the store because no one commercially no one commercially makes this clothing or pattern. We, You have to make it yourself. I'll be knitting a hat soon made of alpaca wool. It's dyed to the color I want, and it will have the design and ca cabling I want. I literally cannot get that at a store, and if I could, it would be so much more expensive to buy than to make it myself. Your friends are comparing a well-made, long-lasting, extremely expensive were you to buy it at a store versus make it yourself garment to something dirt cheap that's going to fall apart after a year. Unless you take really, really good care of it. But still, that is a true valid point. It's a bit like telling someone who loves cooking, why bother making an elaborate delicious meal when McDonald's is right across the street? So true. It, it's the process. It's the getting into it. And finishing it and accomplishing something and just seeing what 
you've done. And at least with crochet, you can either give it to somebody to keep forever or you can keep it forever. Cooking, you you literally consume and it no longer exists. But cooking is very vital and very enjoyable because we all need to eat, right? I mean, to fuel our bodies and to keep them going. But painstaking hours upon hours of cooking is gone in minutes, whereas painstaking hours and hours of crocheting lasts a lifetime or until the fabric has dissolved into nothing but can last forever and be cherished for as long as it's around. So there, there we go. There we go. That's why you make your own stuff. And I find it so hilarious that they commented or that they had posted, said that the, how wholesome and amazing the crochet community is when just prior to <laughs> the story, just prior to was literally like, why are older crocheters mean? <laughs> so we just did two polar opposites today. Um, all right. On to something cute. Oh my goodness, speaking of the hexagon cardigan, look at this adorable Halloween version. And I love, love, love the pockets. So the person said, Halloween cardigan made this to wear for work on Halloween and I could not be happier. I adore my pumpkin pockets and it was my first time making and attaching pockets. That is awesome. I absolutely love it. People were saying adorable, love the pump pumpkin pockets. Somehow the unlikely color combo works delightful. Um, then the original poster said, thanks. I saw them together in the store and had an uh, epiphany. Uh, someone else said, this is so cute. Great job. That is absolutely adorable. I love it. And yes, I definitely need to get started on my very own hexagon cardigan because this is too cute. I need to do it. I need to do it. There you go. So I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, I would love it if you would hit the like button and subscribe if you would like to be notified of any and all future uploads and click on the no uh, notification bell. Uh, I'm going to try to do something every other week as far as am I the a-hole or drama or whatever. Um, next week we'll probably be an am I the a-hole and then the following week will be something else just so that we can maybe build up some stories that we haven't um, experienced yet. So with that, I hope you have a really great day and yeah, remember gravity works guys. <laughs>